coming in at number five is going to be season six. Now, I know many consider this to be one of the weakest seasons in the show, mainly for the love triangle between Clark, Lana, and Lex. And I will admit, that was a huge issue for this season and the show in general, because at this point in the series, it's far too late for this. It felt like something out of the high school era of the show. And it overshadowed other things like Clark's mission to capture the escaped phantoms and send them back to the phantom zone. But the season still had so much going for it. The premiere episode saw Clark going up against Lex while he was possessed by Zod. Lana's discovery of Clark's secret was long awaited. It felt as if Clark was finally set on the right path regarding his destiny, though I wish season 7 had followed up on this properly. The season introduced Jimmy Olsen, it also introduced Oliver Queen aka Green Arrow, and of course there was the episode Justice, which saw the Justice League finally come together. And the finale was just wow, it had so much going for it. That's where Chloe of course discovered her meteor ability, and we got a glimpse of Bizarro. But the love triangle was a huge problem, and some episodes were a bit lackluster like Hydro. I'm not a big fan of that episode. But overall, this season was a blast to watch. I find it to be extremely underrated for all the reasons I just mentioned, and I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. Now coming in at number 4 is gonna be season 8. So it should be clear from this point onwards that the closer the show got to the end, the better it became. I'm a huge fan of the last three seasons. This season had a lot going for it, like the change in setting, Clark spending more time with Lois, but it also had a couple of things going against it. A change in showrunners, declining ratings, the absence of Lionel Luthor, and the reduced roles of Lana and Lex. But thankfully, the new showrunners managed to knock seasons 8, 9, and 10 straight out of the park. Seeing Clark walk at the Daily Planet alongside Lois was fun. The introduction to Tess Massa and her history with Oliver. Davis Bloom, aka Doomsday, was a great villain, and the Doomsday costume was surprisingly good. Plus, Tess secretly knowing Clark's secret was really unexpected and Clark developing a sort of pre-Superman superhero persona, in this case the red and blue blur, was also pretty exciting and it set him back on track after his hesitations in season 7. But the season also made a few questionable decisions here and there. The decision to bring back Lana for about 4 or 5 episodes when her return could have really only been for one episode and her kind of interfering with Clark's newfound feelings for Lois was a mistake but she had a good send-off, so there's that. And then Lex. Lex wasn't even played by Michael Rosenbaum, and he's only in a couple of episodes, and then Oliver ends up killing him, which I thought was just stupid. And it felt like the show was kind of holding back in some areas. And the finale had some issues as well. Firstly, the final fight between Clock and Doomsday was about 30 seconds or so. Wasn't very long. Then there's Jimmy Olsen. And I think this is what really hurt the finale the most, was the fate of Jimmy Olsen. So Jimmy finds out Clark's secret, which is great, but then he's killed by Davis Bloom prematurely before Clark becomes Superman. And then it's revealed that this isn't Jimmy Olsen, this is Henry James Olsen. And that Henry had a younger brother that he didn't know about because his mother abandoned him at a young age. And this younger brother so happens to be the real Jimmy Olsen. It just didn't make a lick of sense, you know, when you take everything into account. But nonetheless, I still really enjoyed the season, despite its flaws. It took the show in the right direction going forward, and I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. So coming in at number 3 is the final season, season 10. Now this was, for the most part, a satisfying ending to the show. It had so many great things going for it. Clark's final trial in the form of Darkseid, the Vigilante Registration Act, the Homecoming episode, the introduction to Earth 2, Tess discovering that she's actually a Luther, and just the return of several familiar faces in general but it had a few problems. For example, it tried to do so many things in 22 episodes that it didn't quite deliver in every single department. 
They screwed up Darkseid. Chloe was only in a couple of episodes. The Suicide Squad just kind of disappeared after the first half. Too much emphasis on the romance between Clark and Lois, even though it's very, very important. And even some of the filler episodes weren't all that good, such as Harvest, which is the absolute worst episode in the entire show. And the episode Booster, while it wasn't terrible, the idea that this is how Booster Gold and Blue Beetle meet, it felt kind of awkward and they turned Blue Beetle into what pretty much amounted to an Iron Man ripoff, if you will. And then of course there's the finale. Now I loved the finale. I didn't mind the final fight between Clark and Darkseid amounting to, well, this. Clark finally embracing his destiny, the revelation that his trials basically consisted of everything we had seen throughout the entire show. Clark's reunion with Lex, the final scene, all of that stuff was fantastic. But Tom Welling's reservations about putting on the actual suit kind of left something to be desired and the Lex mind wipe did not need to happen. I get why they chose to do it, but can we not have at least one continuity out there where Lex knows Clark's secret? You know, what if Lex chose to keep Clark's secret hidden from the world in honor of their friendship now that he knows why he had to hide it from him? Wouldn't that have been amazing? But no, we never got to see that. But nonetheless, the season was a blast from start to finish despite its flaws, and I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So, time for my top two. We have season 5 and season 9. I love both of these seasons, they're amazing, and after binging the show last year in its entirety, it was kind of hard to decide between these two, but eventually I came to the perfect decision. So my number two pick is going to be season 9. Neil before Zod is all I need to say about season 9, because General Zod is in it and he was an amazing villain. Clark donning a new suit and taking his superhero persona to the next level, all of that was handled really well. There's some other villains like the Toy Man and Metallo, Amanda Waller and the organization Checkmate, and other stuff like Chloe's relationship with Oliver and the episode Absolute Justice, as well as the political subtext within the story. However, this season blatantly ripped off the Matrix in a variety of ways, from the fight scenes, to the costumes, to some of the visuals and certain story beats here and there, plus some episodes weren't particularly great. And as much as I love this season, the real reason as to why it's not my number one pick is because it doesn't have the Luthers. I know Tess is technically a Luther, but still, I'm talking about Lex and Lionel. But overall, this was a fantastic season and an excellent penultimate season in general, as it leads up to the final season brilliantly. And I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. But my number one pick can only be season 5. This season struck the perfect balance between the old and the new when it came to Smallville. It did take the show into some new territories, such as introducing the Fortress of Solitude, the Phantom Zone, Brainiac, a couple of Justice League members, and it even laid the groundwork for the arrival of General Zod. But it still held on to its roots in many ways. You know, the show was still set in Smallville, Martha and Jonathan were still around, the Luthers were still around, and so on. Clark and Lana broke up yet again this season, and I liked the idea of her hooking up with Lex, but I wished that Clark didn't intervene like he did in season 6. I wished that by this point, he had finally let go of his feelings for her. The season also had the 100th episode Reckoning, which saw the death of Jonathan Kent, and that episode is, to this day, my absolute favorite. Lionel being revealed to have known Clark's secret for a while, and then serving as an emissary to Jor-El, all of that was brilliant. And let's not forget the finale, with Clark being sent to the Phantom Zone, and Lex becoming possessed by Zod. What a fantastic finale. The season wasn't perfect, it had its weak episodes like Thirst, where Lana turned into a vampire, but other than that, it was an amazing experience, and it's easily one of the best seasons in TV history. So for that, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. So yeah, that was my personal ranking of Smallville as a whole. So I guess that brings my Smallville retrospective to a close. I'm going to miss this though, because I do love this show. But now that that's out of the way, 
Next time we're going to begin my 24 retrospective. It's going to be broken down into three videos and they're all going to premiere on the same day. But the first video is going to revolve around the first three seasons of the show. So look forward to that very soon. And thank you all for watching. Please be sure to like the video, share and subscribe. Hit the notification icon. Be safe during this time and I'll see you soon.